How to Calculate the Eligibility for Canadian Citizenship In today's video update, let's go through how you can count your Canadian citizenship eligibility. One of the eligibility measures to achieve Canadian citizenship is that you are required to be physically present in Canada for three out of the last five years. Among additional criteria, if you are age 18 and above, you must have been in Canada for a minimum of 1,095 days out of the five years immediately before you apply for citizenship. When calculating the eligibility for your citizenship you must first regard that you must have been a permanent resident for a minimum of two years to fulfill the physical presence requirement. Once you achieve permanent residency, each day in Canada counts as one full day toward your citizenship application. Each day, you were physically present in Canada as a temporary resident before your permanent residency counts as half a day, up to a maximum of 365 days. So, if you were a temporary resident who did not travel away from Canada for three years, it would only count for 365 days. Also, Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada regard only the five years directly before the date of your application for the physical presence condition. For instance, if you have been physically present in Canada as a permanent resident for the past five years, then the time you spent in Canada as a temporary resident does not count. However, if you were not a temporary resident prior to your permanent residency, then you must have spent a minimum of 1,095 days or three years in Canada. Bear in mind that if you're applying with more than the minimum required number of days, you are accounting for any miscalculations. Even IRCC advises on its webpage to apply with more days than you need. So, what are other eligibility criteria for Canadian citizenship? In complement to the physical presence condition, let's look at some of the other eligibility criteria for Canadian citizenship. The requirements are as follows. You must be able to speak either English or French sufficient enough to communicate in Canadian society. If you are between ages 18 and 54, you have to present evidence of language proficiency. You cannot hold a criminal history that denies the granting of citizenship as decided by IRCC. You must be familiar with the rights and responsibilities of citizens and have basic knowledge of Canada's geography, political system, and history. You may require to file taxes in Canada for a minimum of three years during the five years before the date you apply. Furthermore, you must present a formal application to IRCC and pay a government processing fee and right of citizenship fee. Once you satisfy the eligibility criteria, you can apply for Canadian citizenship. Once approved, candidates between ages 18 and 54 will have to undergo a citizenship test. You must then attend a citizenship ceremony, receive a certificate of Canadian citizenship, and take the oath of citizenship. Once completed, you officially become a Canadian citizen. Now let's look at what are the physical presence requirement for refugee claimants and pre-removal risk assessment applicants are. If you obtained a work or study permit during the assessment of your refugee claim or pre-removal risk assessment, these documents will not grant you temporary resident status. Therefore, you cannot utilize this period in your physical presence calculation. If you are claiming time as a protected person, the only duration allowed is the time from when you accepted a positive decision on your claim or pre-removal risk assessment application until the day before you became a permanent resident. The days you spend in Canada following the approval and prior to the permanent residency counts as half a day toward your citizenship application. What if you were in prison in Canada? If you have spent any time in a Canadian prison on probation or parole, those days generally cannot be counted toward your physical presence. However, there are some exceptions. Time on probation, as a consequence of a conditional discharge, could count towards physical presence if you did not breach parole or fail to comply with the conditions of parole. Furthermore, time spent in prison or on probation does not have to be declared if you received a youth sentence and completed that sentence. 
If your time serving a sentence for an offense in Canada occurred above five years before the date of your application, then it does not have to be declared, as it is beyond the period that IRCC regards for the physical presence requirement. We have reached the end of today's video update. Subscribe to our channel for more updates on Canadian immigration. Thanks for watching.